Hi, Chelsea here from Product Marketing at Digital Ed. I want to share with you how you can leverage the customizability of Mobius assignments so that you don't need to compromise on the delivery of online STEM homework or assessment when it comes to your Mobius class. Using Mobius assignments, you can create anything from ungraded practice homework to high stakes proctored exams and everything in between. I'll show you how to work with the assignment editor. We'll start with how to access the actual assignment editor and then we'll do a quick preview of how to include content into your assignment. We'll see the properties that you can modify and some key highlights, and then how different types of assignments look and behave for your students. The types of assignments that we'll take a look at are the anonymous practice, classic homework, a test or a quiz, a proctored exam, including the proctored browser mode, the mastery dialogue, and a study session dialogue. Let's jump in. Here I am on the class homepage that displays the activities or lessons and assignments that I've made available to my students, as shown here. These activities are contained inside of units. Let's go to the content repository, which is the central content creation hub, where we can create a new assignment for my students. Inside of the content repository, I'll ensure that my current class is selected, then that my lessons and assignments pane is expanded, as shown here. This Lessons and Assignments pane is actually my Units pane, which contains all of my units. I'll then select the unit that I want to use to create my new assignment. In that Expanded Unit pane, I'll then go to the bottom and click the Create New menu and select Assignment. That will take me to the Assignment Editor. Another way to access the Assignment Editor is at this top left menu by clicking Create New, selecting an assignment, and then again selecting the unit that you want to use to create your new assignment. No matter which way you choose to get to your assignment editor, it's going to look the same. Here I am now inside of the assignment editor. This is where I can assign the name to my new assignment. If it's a longer name, I can assign a short name. I can then also include a description of the assignment. I can then expand this pane and include any type of text or media to have appear at the head of each page of my assignment. And I can do the same in this pane down here to have any type of text or media appear on the results page of my assignment. I'll now jump to the second tab of the assignment editor where I can include content into my assignment. I can choose to author content from scratch or I can import existing content from my content repository. Because this isn't the focus of this video, I'm just gonna do a quick import from my content repository. Feel free to check out the online help for more details of how to include content into your assignment. I'm going to go to my questions tab and select a few questions here that I know ahead of time that I want to include. I'll click import. And here are now my questions inside of my assignment. The total points of my assignment is represented down here. I can update that value by changing this field and that total will then update. I can also click and drag my questions to impact the question order that my students will see. And lastly, on specific questions, I can select this black down arrow here, and I can choose to add an annotation to my question. This annotation brings up this editor, where I can then also choose where this annotation actually appears with respect to the question. If I'm happy with my content that is going to be included in my assignment, I can then jump over to the third tab of the assignment editor. This is the properties tab, which contains the bulk of the assignment properties when it comes to your assignment. In Mobius, you can choose from five main different types of assignments, as shown here. This is the first grouping of properties. Mobius also offers a sixth type of assignment called the Adaptive Assignment. This uses a separate editor, so make sure you check out the online help for more details on that. Some properties to highlight in this section are, for the homework or quiz, there's a printable version that you can select, which allows your students to print an offline version of the assignment. When you choose to create a proctored exam, this proctor sign in to start setting is enabled by default, and this requires the student to get proctor authorization to begin their attempt. Another important proctored exam property is the proctored browser mode down here. For a mastery dialog, for example, I can click to edit the mastery policies. Mastery policies are used to control a student's progression through questions based on the correctness of their responses. After you select the type of assignment that you want to create, we can scroll a bit further down, and now we can define some general properties. These are properties that control some basic settings like a maximum attempt or a time limit. 
Further down are the feedback during properties that impact a student during their attempt, like their access to hints and feedback or the how did I do function. Then there's the feedback after properties that control what a student is shown when they click to submit their attempt. These three groupings can come together to form what we call a policy set which you can define ahead of time and then select to automatically apply properties to speed up your assignment creation. Check out policy sets in the online help for more details on that. Advanced policies can be used to control your student's access to the attempt by stating, for example, that they have to first pass a specific assignment in order to be able to access this current assignment that you're building. Then there are additional general properties like the minimum passing score or how your questions are displayed. And then we have the scheduling and visibility that relate to the timing of your student's access to the activity. You can define a start date, a due date or end date, and even select a date to restrict feedback until so that all of your students have an equal and fair chance at the assignment. For example, if a student completes their assignment today and receives their grade and associated feedback, in most cases, you don't want them sharing this information with their classmates who haven't yet completed their attempt. Additional feedback properties relate to custom messaging that you can define when it comes to your student's final grade or whether they have passed or failed their assignment. There's also reporting where you can enter an email address to receive notifications each time an attempt is completed. And lastly, there's the IP address and host names list where you can define which specific IP addresses, for example, will permit access to the assignment. Now that we've gone through the properties that are available, let's see how certain assignment types look for your students. Here's a simple assignment to show where certain text is displayed that you insert. This is where the description of the assignment will appear. This is where the text at the head of each page will appear. This is where a question annotation can appear depending on where you select its location. And after I submit my assignment, this is where the text on the results page will appear. When you define assignment properties, identifying tags will be shown on the class homepage so that your students are aware of important details before they launch their attempt. This is where these tags will appear. As well, a range of status icons are possible depending on the student's eligibility and the properties that you define for the assignment. This is explained in more detail in the online help on the class homepage help topic. Let's now look at an anonymous practice assignment. A student can work through this activity without impacting their grade and have access to maximum feedback so that they can really master the content. So I have access to how did I do, view hints, and as well feedback when I submit a response. The student will be still shown a grade at the end to indicate their understanding, but this grade doesn't get pushed to the gradebook. Here's a classic homework assignment with a maximum number of attempts and the ability to print an offline version if the student would like. Here's my maximum attempts. And if I click to start, this is where I can choose to print my assignment or just continue to work on the assignment online right now. Here's an assignment that can act as a test or a quiz, but it's been created using the homework or quiz assignment type. You'll notice that there's a time limit, a maximum attempt of one, and a due date. This information is shown here, and it will also be visible on my launch page. When I click to start, my time limit is displayed in the top right. Here's another sample test, but this one has a start date. Since I'm trying to access this assignment before the start date, I'm blocked and can't enter the assignment. This test has advanced policies and I'm informed on the launch page that I don't actually satisfy the requirements to be able to launch this attempt. Here's a proctored exam that can also be used to create tests or quizzes and also higher stakes tests and exams for increased test integrity. You'll see that when I launch my attempt, I'll need to request authorization. I then gain this authorization from my proctor. Once I receive this authorization, I'm then able to start my actual attempt. Similar to this is the proctored exam with the proctored browser mode. This offers even higher test integrity than the regular proctored exam, as my browser is locked down so that it can only access my assignment window. Once my proctor provides me with authorization, You'll then see that my browser is then locked down and I cannot access any other tab or program. The second I click on another monitor, press escape on my keyboard, or try to open another tab or program, I'm locked out of my attempt. 
Mastery dialogue assignments indicate to the student during their attempt what they need to do to progress to the next question. I'll submit my response to this question. I'm told that I got it wrong, so I'll click to go to the next question. And again, I'm given the status of this first question, and it's indicating that I'm getting this wrong, and in order to progress, I need to get it right. Getting questions right or wrong are tracked in this progress table, and the assignment requires the student to demonstrate minimum levels of mastery before progressing to the next question. Lastly is the study session dialogue, which is similar to the anonymous practice in the sense that the student has unlimited practice without consequence to their grade and maximum access to feedback. But this assignment type is structured more as flashcard style learning. This was just a quick summary of what you can do with Mobius assignments and the vast range of customizable properties. Be sure to check out the Mobius Online Help for more details on how to make the most of your Mobius assignments.